think a lot. I think, um, you know, you look across the landscape of college basketball, um, it's almost impossible to win with young players, with true freshmen. So I think that's one, you know. Um, our freshmen got older and got better. And then we did a good job adding pieces in the portal that were older, that have experience. Um, our guys that were here last year, you know, Dawson got better. And then you add uh, Parker Fox and Isaiah Enon, guys with experience that are older, that are now able to play. Just it, it completes your roster. And so um, you know, I think that's the biggest difference, you know. Coaching matters, but players make a difference. And, and you got to have good enough players and you got to have depth uh, if you want to be successful now. Did you kind of learn how to recruit the portal as you kind of went through time? Or how, how, how did you kind of land on these guys that are helping you more this year? It seems like? Yeah, no, you, you have to learn how to figure out the portal as far as recruiting goes. Um, you know, I found that out my first year when, you know, they were all portal guys. You figure out quickly, like, all right, what can fool you? Because um, it's a quick recruitment. I mean, you're looking at could be weeks. Like, if a kid's ready to make a decision, um, it literally could be a matter of weeks where you got to figure out, all right, what's their game? What are they good at? What are they bad at? What's their personality? What are their, what's their makeup? Um, so you try to do as much homework as you can to figure out that piece because um, that's obviously important. And then you just try to watch as much tape. And then the hardest part is you're recruiting the portal hoping – that the team you're recruiting them to stays what you think they are, like intact. Because you could get a kid and then lose one because of that. And so now it's like, okay, I took this kid for a reason. Now it's going to look a little different because maybe you lose a part that you thought would go well with this particular player. So that's the, that's the hardest juggling act is that, all right, you recruit a portal, but the, the portal is fitting in need of what you think you, you have on your roster. So now you're trying to figure that out of like, all right, for what I have today, yeah, this could be a great need. But if you if you lose a kid in a week or two, all of a sudden a good piece then might not be a great piece that fits. Um, but we knew that we wanted to you know increase our perimeter, um, so that was a good fit with with Elijah and Mike, um, and add depth to that and add playmaking. We knew what we had with Cam coming in um, as far as just skill level, and it's kind of just what you try to do. Yeah, I think the best example this year is the balance you guys have in that Maryland game. How yeah. do you feel like you guys have been able to, to use that to your advantage? Yeah, no, I, I, I totally agree. And we actually used, I used Maryland as an example last year. Um, I just felt like every time we played them, you looked over and some new group was checking into the game. And it was just like, at, you know, firepower after firepower, just different lineup and just, they just overwhelms you with just rotations they could have. And I just felt like, man, if we could somehow steal that philosophy a little bit, um, I think it's to our benefit. And I told our guys, it doesn't always happen early in January because most people knock on wood are healthy and feel good. The, the depth really comes into play, in my opinion, in February and March when the grind of the season really takes a hold of teams and stuff happens, as you guys know. That's when we've got to be able to rely on our depth and rely on guys that um, have extended minutes. And hopefully those minutes mean that we don't have guys playing consistently over 34, 35 minutes. Um, so you can remain or hopefully remain healthier longer. Um, but I do, I thought that our depth, um, our ability to play different styles, um, I've kind of tweaked a little bit too of like we could also go small ball with some teams um, now that Braden's back because of his versatility as a defender um, and be able to play, you know, quote unquote, four guards in the big. But I think us having the options to, to be able to adapt to anything, whether it's playing two bigs or not, um, you know, hopefully will help us down the road. It seems like the Maryland game really kind of came down to I like it, you know, like every team, we shoot a ton. I mean, these guys are in here every day. We kind of got a mandatory number they, they need to hit. But from a player standpoint, it's totally different shooting it in here or shooting it in an empty Williams Arena when there's not a scoreboard, there's not fans, and there's not, like, game pressure. So what you want to do is you want to be able to, to get to a point where they're, they're able to make them in that environment because that's what builds confidence. It's not, you know, here it's good, and, and again, it, they'll, they'll develop a routine, and, but they need to see it translate in meaningful game pressure type minutes. Um, but our guys know now that, like, free throws obviously matter. They can, they can win or lose. Like, there's, there's a small margin for error in all these conference games. You don't want to lose a game because you're not confident at the line. And so it's just getting guys more comfortable up there um, and, and, and letting them see it go in. 
along those lines, what is the concern of, with Pharrell with the way he's shooting and whether you can keep him in for late game situations? Yeah, you know, again, I think it still goes back to it's, it's not because of not want to. I mean, he's in here more than anybody. Um, and he knows it, you know, that, that that's no secret. Um, but it, I think it's just getting him to, to see that one or two go in, you know, and I think that's that's huge. It's so important for a player um, to, to, to go through the success of that. Um, and so I just think it's a matter of time before before they start falling. Again, it's just it's it's embracing the moment almost and being able to block out whether you're home or you're away and just focus and you know, not let nerves take over, not let your psyche take over, get out your own head. Um, again, it just sees that one one to go in because, you know, you want to be able to play him at the end of games. I mean, he's a force. Um, so until then, you know, probably go offense, defense, which is what we've kind of done, um, play it from there. Indiana's got a couple good big guys. I mean, what's key to slowing them down on Friday? Yeah, really good bigs, really good bigs. And they do a really good job of um, playing through their bigs, whether it's, you know, man or zone. I mean, that ball is going inside, and and those guys produce. And so, we've got to do a good job. Um, you know, we've got to be physical early. Um, you know, we've got to do do a good job of just forcing tough shots. I mean, because of their length, you know, especially where you can shoot over the top, so you got to be there with a presence. Um, you know, Renault is just he's a, he's a little bit like Dawson. You know, those lefty guys they always get left, no matter what you say. And so we got to know that. You got to know scouting report. Um, but I think early, you know, it's, it's not letting them get into a rhythm early, I think will be, will be big for us. When you have some early success like you have so far, especially with these last two wins, I don't know if expectations change yet, but it kind of feels like the conversation and the narrative is, is changing. How do you, where do you sense that's at right now, just in terms of externally and even internally? Yeah, no, I mean, um, we always want to win, so it doesn't necessarily change for us, you know. Um, I, I do hope externally people, you know, like what they see and, and they come out and support. Cause I keep, I'm like, like a broken record, you know, it makes a difference. You know, you watched the Rutgers game last night. Um, nobody wants to go to the rack and play them. Nobody wants to go to Nebraska and play Nebraska. You know, I've, I've lived that firsthand. Yeah. And so for our fans to understand um, that they, they do make a huge <clears throat> difference and it's, it's, it's obvious, uh, you know, in league when you just watch these games that environment matters, you know, and, and momentum is a big part of winning basketball games, right? Being able to flip it or, or maintain it. And the home crowd helps with that. Um, and, you know, it's, it's, you don't want it to be a, a, neutral, a neutral sight feeling, especially in league play. And I thought our fans were great last game. They gave us a boost. I uh, thought the numbers were great, but they're, they're knowledgeable. They, they, they get into it when we need them to get into it. And I thought that was a – a factor that really helped get our guys kind of, you know, over the edge and, and be able to, to push it out. So um, just keep hopefully that the, the, the outside, you know, energy is, is good and, and they like what they see and, and they come out and support. Yeah, and there's, there's no secret that, um, you know, you've got a lot of Minnesotans on your team. Uh, what about the state right now that you think is producing a lot of talent has been for a while? Um, you know, you, you're doing well mm -hmm. with St. Thomas. Um, you know, there's a number one team in Division Two right now. Yeah, I saw I mean, that. So it's just the fact that you know you're not relying totally on Minnesota kids, but yeah. you do have quite a bit of talent on this team from from the state. Yeah, I think um, I think our state's always done a good job of just developing basketball players. Um, I think it starts at the youth level. I think we have really good coaches from youth league to junior high to high school. You know, AAU programs across the state do a really good job teaching and coaching, and not just going out there and you know letting it rip. Um, and I think, you know, our guys at the next level have done a good job of, of making basketball important and getting better and understanding kind of what impacts winning. Um, and so, yeah, no, I think our state across the board, regardless of level, you know, does a good job of just playing, playing good basketball. Could you be where you're at without your Minnesota guys? I mean, across the board, you got guys coming off the bench, you got the starters, you got... Yeah, we got two guys signed coming in. Um, no, I, th I think, it, you know, it, it, our league traditionally, um, you know, when you have really good in-state talent, it helps. You know, when, when I was rolling, they have probably really good in-state talent that year. You know, not that they can't get it from outside, but same with us. You know, when we're a really good team, you, you have that year, that couple years, really good in-state talent that uh, hopefully you're able to keep home. You know, recruiting is so hard 
you know, if you have an advantage of being able to go 20 minutes or an hour or two hours to get a really good kid, um, you know, and you're able to do that, that, that helps your program. So, yeah, no, we're, we're big fans of the development here and want, want it to continue. Um, and, yeah, no, our program is going to always recruit the state hard and figure out the best fit for us. And what have you seen in the last couple of games specifically from, from Elijah? You know, I just think his development um, and more like just his maturity with his game. Um, I think he's just coming into his own with – understanding just confidence wise his ability to to make really good plays especially when he plays slow and he develops and he and he reads it um you know he's so fast i think initially it was like you know you're 100 miles an hour all the time and now it's developing that pace that he's got and i just think his confidence and his pace combined with his speed has really just kind of changed things for us a little bit and he's finding guys and it's funny you know when when the other guys know you have a willing passer. They cut a little bit harder. They run a little bit faster. Um, they find ways to get open because they know if they do, he's going to find them. And so I just think it's kind of trickled down to everybody, and it's, it's really helped our offense. Can you put your finger on the success you guys have had in the second half? That's a good question. I, I think some of it, you know, um, like the Maryland game, I, I really do believe it was we had to go through a first half where there's a different type of energy in the building and a different type of expectation and guys feel that I don't they can deny it all they want I know they do and and that's part of it like we haven't gone through that you know but that was a meaningful game and I think everybody kind of sensed it. it's like man if you could if they could win that game that's a lot of momentum well we haven't experienced that so we had to kind of go through it. and it's the tightness of all right you know you still got to be able to play free um, but knowing that there's expectations and I think think um, after halftime, they were able to kind of take a breath and, you know, figure that out. I think it's like on the road, you know, Ohio State, same thing. We got off to a slow start. It was our first road game in the Big Ten. And so there's a lot of, like, intrepidation with, okay, what is this going to be like? Well, we're able to go to Michigan and be competitive that first half because that anxiety is gone for Elijah, for Mike, you know, on, all the way on down, um, you know, Cam, those new guys. They knew what it was. So now it's like, all right, you're able to withstand that first half. And then the second half, when it's winning time, after you found your rhythm, now you're able to just go and play. And I think that's the biggest thing is getting our team to a point where we've got enough experiences where nothing phases you. And now you can just go play. You can know, now you can worry about just winning the game, right? So at Indiana, I addressed it right away. I said, this is going to probably be the best environment we've played in, right? We have to find a way to like, to not have that impact us the first four minutes and have the oohs and the ahs. Like, there's going to be, what, 14,000, 15,000 fans. They're going to be crazy. They're going to be loud. There's going to be a momentum play. Like, try to get them to understand that now and say, all right, we don't want to battle that and have the big eyes that first, you know, four to eight minutes. Um, but, unfortunately, we still got to go through it. So, it's just it's experiences when you're, when you're dealing with a new group. Um, and, again, I think we're where we're at because we responded, you know, to our loss versus Missouri. We learned from San Francisco. We learned from Ohio State. Uh, I don't think we're where we're at if those guys didn't see that on film and kind of hit in the face with that and said, you know what, he's right. We got to change um, because it can be kind of fool's gold when you don't get kind of smacked in the face a little bit. Do you like the lineup, that, the starting lineup that you have where sometimes the, maybe there is a little bit of a slow start? Yeah, I, I don't mind. You know, I got confidence in all our guys, so that doesn't necessarily – matter to me um, you know my biggest point all the time is the mentality and what is our mentality whether you're a starter or you're a sub you need to have that right mentality like I need to see that look in your eyes that you know you're ready to roll and again it doesn't matter if you're a starter it doesn't matter if you're getting 30 minutes a game if you don't have it like we'll well I'll make change um, and so they know that you're trying to build kind of that warrior spirit at all times regardless of who you are um, but mentality with us is such a big thing. And I think, you know, we respect every opponent. You do your scouting, you do your due diligence. But at the end of the day, I've learned with this group, um, if we're not right, it doesn't matter. We're talented enough where if we are right, we can make a competitive game out of it. So a lot of times now it's like I'm worried about, you know, what's our mental state? Are guys foaming at the mouth, ready to roll? Um, is our mentality right? Are we confident? Um, because if we check those boxes, then – I think everybody in our in our in our locker room feels pretty good. Thank you. All right. Appreciate it. Yeah, appreciate it.